ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am Hiromichi Shirakawa, uh, Credit Suisse Chief Economist for Japan, uh, based in Tokyo. Um, I, I'm, it's, it is my big pleasure uh, to introduce uh, our speaker this morning, uh, Mrs. Uh, Murata Lenho, the member of Japan's uh, House of Councillors, the Upper House, and a member of the uh, Democratic Party of Japan. Well, Mrs. Lenho uh, began her career, political career, in 2004, and she has held many senior responsibilities, um, such as the, uh, the member of budget screening uh, committee in the Hatoyama and Khan cabinets. And she also was the minister uh, in charge of the um, government revitalization and civil service reform in the Khan and Noda cabinets. Uh, before entering politics, uh, she was a very prominent journalist. Well, the, with the new administration uh, having started uh, late December last year, um, stock markets have picked up and the yen has weakened in expectation for a more aggressive monetary easing by the Bank of Japan under Abe administration. And so far, the LDP new government um, has succeeded in changing the market expectations. In the meantime, we know that there remain headwinds and structural issues in Japan. And today, this morning, uh, we'd like to share uh, Mrs. Lenho's insights and her understanding about the current state of the economy and politics. And we we'll very much appreciate um, her comments on what is really happening from here uh, in Japan. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Mrs. Lenho to the AIC. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Len Remho. Thank you for a kind introduction. And I'm very nervous to speak in front of so many investors. And also, I'm nervous for another reason. Uh, Mr. Former Prime Minister, Mr. Hatoyama, is sitting in right in front of me. That makes me very nervous. <laughs> and today, uh, we can talk about uh, the DPJ uh, uh, the administration. And I am the upper house member from DPJ. And I'm not really sure that you uh, you have a better understanding about the uh, uh, Japanese politics. And there was a lower house election last December, and our party lost miserably. We had um, 230 seats, but now like 57 seats. So it's quarter of what it used to be. And then on, instead, Abe's administration won, LDP won. So basically, we lost and they came back in power. The LDP came back in power. And that's how the Japanese current situation is. So I am one of this like losing uh, the DP, uh, DPJ, like an uh, opposition party. The Credit Suisse uh, gave me this uh, title uh, to, uh, about the speak. You know, it, if the weather at the Abe, uh, the administration is going to succeed, they want me to talk about this. You know, of course, to be honest, I don't want him to be successful because we lost. And so therefore, you know, we don't want him to succeed. But it has to be successful because, you know, for the Japanese national, I want you investors to invest into Japan. So we just start here to criticize the Abe administration. I want to talk about the true Japan. 
and they have, they have a two strings. So because like Abe, uh, Mr. Abe is the second time prime minister, the first time around, so he didn't really lose the election. He said he was like, you know, not in a good health. He was sick, so that is why he resigned, you know, but this is the first time, you know, some prime minister resigned for the health reason. So second time, you know, he's like more determined. He has like his grandfather was a prime minister and he has a high pride, a strong pride, and he was criticized and he had to resign. So this is a second time. So this is like the second time. That's his strength or the advantage. And the second uh, the strength or the advantage, like, you know, our DPJ is no longer a threat. You know, we only have a 56 seats in lower house. And even when we came into power uh, in 2009, we had like 170 seats, but it's no longer the case. So, you know, for the ruling party, like, you know, they don't have a major uh, op uh, opposition party, that's an adv advantage. And they have uh, political issues and also the monetary issues. And then they have been talking about all those different like policies and measures they're going to take. And that Mr. Abe said uh, the BOJ should be uh, basically printing so much money. And that's what he said when he was running for the pr uh, prime minister. So inflation target and economic stimulus. So that was one of his election uh, pledge. And then and after Mr. Abe came into uh, the office and the stock market has been good and also yen has been uh, weak and also America, uh, U.S. economy has been recovery, uh, recovering and also the EU is doing much better than like uh, the Greece crisis time. So I think, you know, Abe as like an administration started at a good timing and also, you know, we should appreciate, you know, the good start of the, um, Mr. Abe's like start. But whether uh, this, you know, the recent uh, stellar performance of the stock market is it really japan's like in you know, a true like a power or does it really mean that uh, the japanese corporate is are doing better we have to really question ourselves so all those like uh, economic policies uh the um, that the LDP is like implemented. Like we need to check as an opposition party you know, whether they like really have a good and tangible policies. So, so B they put that pu uh, pressure on BOJ, and they're trying to uh, target of like a two percent inflation target, and they're trying to achieve that. So this. Since 1991, we haven't really uh, reached this 2% uh, inflation target, so over 20 years. Even during the bubble, uh, CPI was uh, average of 1.7%, so right now it's less than zero. So in order to bring back to the 2%, you have to realize how hard it is, and you probably understand that better than I do. And then. I think, you know, one discussion that I'm concerned about, you know, uh, this is a discussion within the LDP, whether Mr. Kloda is going to be uh, governor of the BOJ, BOJ or not. If they cannot achieve a 2% target, uh, they're going to basically let go and fire uh, the governor of a BOJ. So they're trying to amend, amend, uh, amend uh, this uh, BOJ Act or BOJ law. So I think you know that's going to uh, infringe autonomy or independence between the government and also the BOJ. Therefore, we are opposing this amendment of BOJ Act in Japan in diet uh, we are having uh, this uh, budget committee and this inflation target increasing the cpi and also uh, the this uh, current share price and also the weaker yen is it going to really enrich our country and also is it going to make the japanese uh, economy better and that's what we are discussing in this uh, budget committee even like we are talking about like a higher CPI, we need to have a real uh, actual like economic recovery. So Mr. Abe's 
and also Mr. Abed Spring hasn't really responded to this question. He said if the uh, CPI goes up, corporate earnings going to go up, and then like employees' wages going to go up. If that happens, like there would be more consumer spending. If consumer spending is activated, and then um, corporate earnings is going to improve, so there would be a positive cycle. That's what that's the response uh, given to us. But whether is it really going to increase the wage of the employees? Are they really going to benefit from this uh, process? And the current. Uh, High, uh, high performance of stock market and uh, weaker yet. And those con some companies, uh, you know, their performance is much, much getting much better, but whether their, those company has increased their wage for their, their employees, but we haven't really seen the result. Even the corporate earnings and the performance is better, and they can raise the capital in the market. But and if they invest the money into the capex, but it takes a while before we start seeing the tangible result of return. And so also, you know, if like the investment is taking place, you know, aside, you know, from like a Tokyo area, of course the time lag is even longer. So we don't really see that uh, the, um, tangible result yet. So therefore, uh, this might actually lead to the bad inflation, I think you know, this can be the risk. You know, I'm very concerned. And the uh, Secretary General and uh, Abe, Prime Minister Abe, you know, his government say he basically uh, made a request to the you know, uh, business circle. He said, please increase the wage of the employees. So usually this is something the labor union should uh, insist. The prime minister doesn't say, make comment, this kind of comment usually. So there are two, uh, many, uh, two uh, basically famous uh, convenience store uh, companies. And they're also doing a business in Hong Kong. And they are increasing the wages for the employees, but only for the full time employees. One major convenience store, uh, this company, and they have 7,000 uh, full time employees in the headquarter. And half of them are not proper, proper uh, employees, and they're like contract employees. So they only like increased the wage of like 3,500 people. And also the, um, those people who work at the convenience store in front line, and they, they have, uh, they're like uh, 150,000 people working. But for them, you know, there's no wage increase. And another one, uh, another convenience store that promised to increase the wage, and they have 6,000 people of a proper employee in a headquarter. Uh, they're going to enjoy the uh, wage increase. But no full time, uh, the part timers, uh, the part timers, they would be, uh, there are like 90,000 uh, people there. So they don't really enjoy this uh, wage increase. So there's like a gap between the poor and the rich. And the majority of the Japanese national do not really benefit uh, this. Uh, wage increase. So this uh, LDP's strategy will not probably function. It's not going to uh, promote the further um, consumption, uh, the individual consumption. So we have like a, this part timer of like a 18 million people in Japan. So we need to really solve the issue of their low wage. We need to come up with some measures, otherwise there would be no further uh, consumption by those people. And I think that's going to be very uh, difficult. And this, this uh, slogan uh, that coming out from the government, also the media, this is the, the price increase in this spring. So the flour cost and the wheat cost is going up, and also the import cost is going up. The bread, pasta, noodles, so anything that's made of the wheat, uh, the, those like retail price would be increased. And also the cooking oil price is going to be increased. And also it's due to, uh, it has something to do with the earthquake that took place uh, two years, but the energy cost is going to increase because uh, we are importing you know, many of the you know, energy sources. So this is going to have a negative impact on um, household. Uh, income and also the 
And also, there would be a weaker yen uh, have an impact on the like, traveling as well. So therefore, small medium uh, business uh, that doesn't have a financial capability, they would actually suffer uh, from uh, this uh, weaker yen and uh, in an inflation inflation as society and like we might uh, we are concerned that you know some of them might be actually weeded out so we need to have a tangible solution now otherwise you know this um abe's administration's uh the solution would not work and also uh in order to improve the economy the industry has to grow and then affiliate company or the related companies would have a better revenue. And then as a result, the employees there would enjoy the higher wage. Then that will lead to a higher consumption or the consumer spending. And that's how the, you know, the recovery cycle should be. But for the last 20 years, then basically we had the slowdown of the uh, industry growth and the aging society and also the low birth rate. Uh, we didn't have enough, you know, the job market and also the wage has gone down and the consumer consumption has gone down. For the last 20 years, excluding the full time. So there was a labor force that they, uh, re was reduced by uh, 25 million people for the last 20 years, excluding students. and. So of course, you know, that means like a reduced way. So therefore, people don't spend money. So for the last 10 years, looking at the National Taxation Bureau, so the taxation revenue of the government has declined by reduced by 109 trillion yen. This is 850,000 yen uh, per household uh, reduction per annum. So even though uh, the interest rate has been very low, but people had no choice but saving rather than spending. And that is why during this time, so this uh, deflation became a norm. But we don't, I don't really blame on um, uh, deflation. But we couldn't really uh, do the structure reform. Instead. And then as a result, we can't sell the products and the price went down. So this deflation is the result. He thinks uh, that Mr. Abe thinks deflation is the one to be blamed. So if he triggers inflation, everything is going to be OK. But I think that it's wrong. So when the DPJ was in a rooting party, we tried to work in trying to reform the structure and trying to also identify gross industry we did that you know during the three and a half years of our our administration and actually a japanese economic uh the structure needs to be reformed the construction industry lost or reduced 1.3 million people labor force has been you know reduced and as for the manufacturing and the manufacturing site has been uh, shifted to India and China. And they also reduced the labor force by uh, 2.6 uh, million uh, people in the last 12 years. So, but you you can look at some of the industry that is increasing the labor force, uh, medical, elderly care, and those uh, you know, industry increased the labor force by 1.5 million people. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, the, in the construction comp uh, the industry, 80% was a man labor force. And uh, the manufacturing um, industry had 70% of the male uh, the labor force. But on the other hand, 80% of the so-called so so like medical and the elderly care industry has like 80% of the women. So basically, we have to shift those like in the male who lost a job to like a social security and also the elderly care, uh, the industry. And also, we have to create the environment where women can work more. And if we tackle these issues, 
And I think we're going to basically weed, uh, weed out, you know, zombie, uh, so-called zombie companies. And I think we can nurture, you know, the growth industry and growth companies. I think if we can manage to do that, uh, Japan's economy can recover uh, quickly. So that's what we are trying to do when we were in uh, uh, when we were ruling party, and also what we are trying to do at that time was um, how we can uh, prompt uh, consumption. Uh, the Mr. Shirakawa told me this: the nominal GDP of the Japan has decreased by uh, 50 trillion yen. Uh, for the last 10 years, and because there is less capex by the co uh, corporate and also the uh, less investment in housing, the only one positive uh, number, which is 0.7 percent, this is the household spending. Household spending has been positive. So basically, who's the driver of this? And this has been basically the pension receiver, the recipient, and basically people over 65 per, uh, old year, years old. They keep spending uh, more money. So we have to basically make sure, ensure their uh, their like you know uh, sense of like security them, and uh, they keep spending money. And overall, uh, the Japan's like a bank savings. 60% of them has been held by the people over age 65. If they spend more of this money, I think you know that's going to activate the um, activate the market. So, because they have a high like a bank savings, so oh, therefore you know the under the no the administration and the pension and those like a medical. And those like a uh, future of the elderly would be guaranteed by the government. Even they still don't send save money, uh, they would be looked after. If they uh, have this safety net, they would spend more money, more money. And that was the idea. So even like you know elderly, they, if they're trying to make money, you know, let's say you know if you're age 86, you're not going to build a mansion. So, like, if you're 77 years old, you're not going to buy a new uh, the sports car or the second house. So basically, that money should be shifted to younger people because like, the younger people tend to spend more money or they have a more chance to uh, spend money. So we needed a money shift. So not just the increasing of the consumption tax. We're trying to uh, basically e increase the um, Inheritance tax, but uh, it decreased the donation tax, meaning uh, while those people are alive and they can like transfer the money to younger generation and they can actually spend. So I guess you know this uh, inheritance tax or the inheritance or like the handover of this asset to the next generation is like an average age of like 80 year, uh, 80 years old. So if their kids should be at 60 years old. So basically the kids are like uh, elderly. So Basically, we wanted to deregulate so that those like uh, 40 years old grandchildren can benefit from this uh, high saving. You know, those 40 years people they have the uh, they have a children, they have a school, you know, fee to pay. So we uh, promoted this reform so because like the younger generation can benefit uh, from uh, older people. And but there was opposition from the LDP, so therefore we could not really complete this reform. But I guess you know this year's you know tax reform, you know we might be able to, they might be able to incorporate uh, this element. I think this like asset transfer between the generation will lead the higher consumption in Japan. That's something I wanted to convey to you. And under the Noda administration in the past, we always trying to specify the growing gross industry and trying to shift the money, circulate the money. That's what we are trying to do. And uh, elderly care and life and energy and green and also agriculture and food. And basically, we put focus on those industry, industry and we're trying to de do the deregulation, and we're trying to come up with the uh, public, uh, the private fund for those um, 
industries. Having said that, Japan's change always takes so slowly, so therefore within uh, the three and a half years of time uh, when we're in power, we couldn't really see the result. So we were highly criticized. So that is why, you know, we ha we lost the uh, last election. You know, so that was really unfortunate. We needed more time, and there are two concerns I have over other uh, the administration. They are lacking the growth strategy uh, when it comes to uh, the economical reform or the policies. And they are talking about the monetary uh, relaxation. And also they are talking about the inflation tar target. They basically changed that sentiment of the Japanese national. Japanese are like, you know, more op uh, optimistic. So that's something we should appreciate. But his tangible plan is not going to be disclosed in uh, June. So that's too late. I'm very concerned about. And also, the you know, second thing I am concerned about is like they are this other uh, administration is like a dependent on public work spending. That means that all the money goes to construction industry. And as I said, the construction industry is shrinking. But so for the fiscal 2000, and fiscal 2004, uh, Abe's like supplemental budget has been largely shifted to this uh, public work spending, and which is double of like what we used, used to spend. So, of course, you know when they put the money uh, into like you know public work spending, such as, for example, Japanese like. Um, uh, Japanese, like, you know, small, like, mom and pop uh, shops, you know, they are losing basically the power. And all those, like, a uh, large size, you know, volume retailers taking away uh, the, you know, uh, customers. So, therefore, you know, if, especially if you go outside of Tokyo, basically, you know, there are, like, all those, like, uh, the mom and pop shops are being closed. So, at uh, so Abe is trying to, uh, Mr. Abe is trying to spend like 30 billion yen for those mom and, shop, uh, mom and, mom and pop shop, shops. So he said he's going to spend this like a 30 billion yen. So like 10 billion yen for the event planning. So even though there's no people, like Abe, Mr. Abe trying to put the CCTV and like a security camera and also trying to come up with like a lamp post or like arcade, you know, the roof should be fixed, you know, for those like um, small stores. So each store, each like uh, the town cost, you know, it's like about like 10 million yen. So all those like a small like uh, the business though, the store district, and spending money on them would not be uh, would not uh, create a tangible result. I think he's just like uh, spending money for nothing, draining the money. But I think uh, he should just uh, spend money and pump into the money to gross uh, strat uh, gross industry. I think he needs to have a more specific plan. Otherwise, you know. I believe he's not spending uh, the the uh, the, uh, the people's tax on a proper man in a proper manner. When we trying to uh, sh when we have to shift the structure or the fundamental economy, he's just like a spending money on nothing, and there's no uh, tangible uh, financial or the economical uh, policy behind his package. But it looks like you know Japanese economy is recovering on a temporary basis, but I'm not really sure that's uh, sustainable. Of course, I urge you to invest in Japan. So therefore, I need to validate you know whether the Abe's policy is working or not. And rather than like you know being defensive, and we should be more proactive. We should participate in TTP and nurture like you know more you know aggressive agriculture industry. And uh, our Japanese, like, you know, uh, the GDP has been decreasing, but GNY is 40, uh, 475 trillion yen. So, of course, you know, the current account has been deficit, but at least, you know, we need to invest more and oversee, and we can bring the return back to Japan. I think we need to become more proactive, more aggressive, and going outside, and, like, we need to, uh, you know, restrict. Uh, reform the structure. But while we were doing this, you know, we had to basically resign from the ruling party. But I hope, you know, Mr. Abe is going to take over this 
and then he would uh, he can show us you know the a tangible result. What we're trying to do as a DPJ was uh, we trying to uh, eliminate the invest uh, the in invested invested, and also and we trying to weed out you know old zombie company, but so therefore we didn't really receive you know the support from them, and they are now supporting LDP. And I think you know other administrations you know the success factor is to be able to convince those old timer uh, the Japanese corporate and make them willing to sh change their mind and uh, shift their attitude you know hopefully you would be more interested in Japan and hopefully you make an investment from the long term perspective and then so it doesn't matter LDP or DPJ Mr. Uh, former Prime Minister Hatoyama and I would keep continuing uh, working on this issue to make uh, Japan a better country and a better economy. On that note, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Thank you. Mrs. Renfo made a very punchy and straightforward um, comment. And uh, we have, roughly speaking, 20 minutes so we'd like to take uh, questions uh, from, from you. And uh, if you have questions, please raise your hands. Thank you very much. That gentleman, please. Please. Hi. Thank you very much for speaking here. Cass Burns from Brevin Howard. <clears throat> in, outside Japan, there's a lot of concern about the fiscal situation in Japan in the last four years. Every year, tax revenues covered less than half the expenditure. How concerned do you think uh, we should be about the fiscal situation? Um, yes, uh, yes uh, you can see uh, that, that uh, when you look at the numbers, it's getting worse, deteriorating. Uh, but there was a greater eastern, great eastern uh, Japan earthquake. And also after that, administration was switched. And that there was a collapse of the Lehman Brothers, so so therefore, uh, they said the expected uh, tax revenue uh, was not we could not really receive. You know, basically the you know nine trillion and lower than initially it was expected. So there are like a many uh, two uh, many factors behind uh, this uh, deteriorating number. But Mr. Katoyama Khan and Mr. Noda. But they said they will not issue uh, more uh, the JGB, not over 44 trillion yen. So that was the pledge they made. And also, they therefore, they're trying to um, reduce the uh, government spending. But you know, under the Abe uh, administration, they have already issued 48 trillion yen of uh, JGB, so therefore they have a less uh, fiscal discipline under the current administration. That's how I see this. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, if, if there is... Uh no question from the floor right now. Um, is the gentleman there or? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, hi. Th um, I, I just like to ask, you know, there's a lot of uh, discussion about Japan's falling nominal GDP, real GDP, etc. cetera. Uh, but of course, Japan's experiencing something which uh, at any rate, the Western world, we don't have any experience of in the 20th century. Uh, which is this really prolonged uh, demographic change. Do, do you think that all of these efforts are actually in vain? Um, and, and politics aside, do you think that the real lesson for Japan is just an adjustment to, to a smaller equilibrium GDP, to a smaller uh, GDP per head, and so on? And, and you know, in a way, are you trying to solve the wrong problem? I don't think, you know, uh, GDP, nominal GDP should be going down. I think we should make an every effort to increase that. Uh, we need to shift the uh, industrial 
structure fundamentally. And those players who need to retire from the industry should uh, retire. And we need to boost the growth of new business. And that's what we have to do uh, as a government. And I guess uh, we are in the middle of that process. So therefore, uh, the m nominal GDP is right now decreasing. But GNI is actually uh, increasing. So I understand uh, the so basically, we can uh, benefit from our uh, investment from the overseas, and then we can increase the GNI to support the Japanese economy. I think you know we need to shift this like a structure. I think we are in the middle of this. That is why the nominal GDP is going down at this moment. Yeah, to the gentleman. Yeah, please. Now, I'd like to address the um, kind of glass ceiling, more of a social question, in Japan, because we have obviously a female prime minister in South Korea. Do you think there one day will be female prime minister in Japan? And how soon? <laughs> and what are the barriers to that, in your personal opinion? So I'd like to be a prime minister tomorrow if I can. <laughs> but I think you know the barrier is quite high. So I think, you know, I really welcome uh, the Korea's like a female uh, president for the first time. And I think that's great. But in Japan, uh, people believe like the parliament should be occupied men. It's just a workplace for men. And the women should support uh, those like men who work in the parliament. So therefore, you know, I just keep working on this issue and trying to change that environment out of 57 uh, member uh, of the lower house from DPJ, we only have uh, three other members, you know, so but at least you know, I'm on the short list, you know, to the uh, you know, first time of female prime minister. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy about this. Um, uh, you talked about, you know, you talked about demographics and, you know, you talked about the trying to balance the issue of aging populations with trying to do something now. What are your thoughts on, uh, you know, and you know, what are the thoughts on in, uh, your, your thoughts on immigration as a solution for the problems? Because mm. clearly, Japan has fewer young people, uh, and you would probably benefit from younger people coming and working in Japan. Uh, and I understand that Japan is a very homogeneous society. Uh, so, what are your thoughts, and how does that kind of play out going forward? Hi, uh, in principle. The Japanese are very close uh, to those immigration policies that those overseas or the foreign workers uh, cannot really stay and work in Japan unless you know they have uh, extraordinary conditions or the reasons. It's really difficult for them to come to Japan. And of course, the labor force is decreasing. Whether that can be offset or the covered uh, by the foreign workers, but it's really difficult to convince the Japanese national to like change this policy and support this immigration policy. So that's how we are in the current situation. Yeah, gentlemen, please. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Um, just to ask a, um, a culture question. Now, historically, LDP has heavily depended on political donation from corporate. So that's why uh, Japanese LDP and the corporate are heavily closely related. Now it is time to reform the corporate, particularly close down those zombie companies, allow the good company to invest, and that makes sense to change the dynamics. Do you think that the LDP this time have the determination to reform the corporate, to really close down those zombie companies? So open a space for the good company to invest. Right now, Japan good company have a lot of money. They have savings, but they don't want to invest. If they invest, they invest in the overseas. This is the one side of problem related to the shrinking of investment. Of course, you already talked about the consumption side. I'm asking you about this uh, uh, corporate investment side. So can you help us to understand? Thank you. Uh, no. the, uh, to answer your first question, whether LDP 
is ready to change or weed out the zombie companies who's donating uh, the money, political money, uh, the funding to the LDP. I'm not really sure what they are going to do, but uh, it's really hard for the LDP to come up with the harsh policies against those like um, supporters. I think, you know, that's a common uh, in anywhere, you know, in any politics. But we like to change that, and uh, we like to see LDP change their stance. And as for the investment, um, Japanese do not really invest in. We don't really have a culture of the investment. And some people say um, uh, the closet, you know, saving, meaning uh, some people do not believe uh, the postal saving. They don't live in, in banks, so they keep that cash in their house. So if they invest in something and they can re get return, I think that's going to create a new like investment culture. But that hasn't taken in place. And our party and also the financial service uh, agency has been like really trying to urge people to invest. But to change the mentality of the average national, I think it takes a while. Please, that there. I guess uh, you're no longer ruling party. And looking back, uh, in hindsight, uh, from what you told me, I understand like what you are trying to achieve. You know, I guess you know you had a really good, a big picture, but I guess so the Japanese people didn't really understand where you're trying to go. So in hindsight, what could you have done? I mean, what was the problem? What you, what could you have been, have done better? If you can change something at this moment, what would you like to change? I should not really answer, but you know we became the ruling party for the first time from the opposition party, so it was like a trial, a trial for us. You know, it was a trial error process, and we had to basically fail. And that I have to admit. So the next time we come in, come back into the power, I think we can do much better. And now we have a more we are more motivated to replace the LDP next time. So I think, you know, we learned so much from the last failure. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, this continued uh, rising sense of nationalism and tension uh, between Japan and China. And as investors that look at not only China, but also Japan as promising investment opportunity, could you perhaps uh, talk a little bit about you know, what, how this is either going to get resolved or uh, perhaps will be addressed to market satisfaction? So this uh, is a Japanese saying, when the politics gets cooler and the economy, get, the economy gets hot. I guess this describes the relationship between the Japan and uh, China for the past 20 years. So we need to have a warmer, hotter relationship. Uh, bilateral relationship in terms of politics and economics. I think at the top level, uh, both country wants better bilateral uh, relationship. But I guess, you know, general public, they don't share the same sentiment, both in China and Japan. Of course, there's no immediate Swiss solution. I guess, you know, we have to be persistent in terms of like um, keeping and maintaining the relationship with these two countries. but. Uh, Japan and China are very much dependent on one another, you know, economically speaking. So I think, you know, it's really wise to keep the relationship open because we are important to each other. Any other questions? Yes, please, that gentleman there. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, I'd like to ask you about shareholder culture in Japan. Uh, most of us in this room are investors, and um, Japan, uh, the last three, four months, the stock market has gone up, but th the last seven or eight years, Japan developed a very bad reputation for corporate governance, uh, not being friendly to foreign shareholders, uh, not being interested in shareholder activism. So I I'd like to, um, in going back also to the comments about getting rid of zombie companies, it it's related to that also. But I'd like to hear your views on how or whether Japan needs or should develop a more um, activist shareholder culture. Hi. Right. The corporate governance has been discussed actively even within Japan and also so all those books, really like, you know, popular books usually talked about, you know, who the company should belong to, like whether the worker or shareholders. We don't really have a clear answer who should, uh, who owns those companies. And um, when you look at um, a retained profit uh, of those companies in the past 10 years, I think the Japanese company tend to retain the profit rather than return uh, to the shareholders or you know they haven't really returned to their employees either so I guess something you know that uh, you know the government should you know uh, basically adjust the policies and also the legislation in order to facilitate this like a government's like return uh, sorry corporate return or corporate uh, to the employers or the shareholders I think that's the government's role <laughs> Increasing uh, the Japanese market to foreign capital, I think, you know, that's, that's the big hurdle behind this. And those barriers should be taken away. And I think, you know, foreign company and the Japanese domestic should compete with one another so that zombie companies would be forced to retire. I think that that's a healthy competition. So that's something I like to promote. OK, uh, we have, roughly speaking, three minutes to go. So uh, the last question, please. Please. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that there are several risks potentially with um, <clears throat> the June announcement from the Abe cabinet on, on reform. Um, <clears throat> as a future potential prime minister yourself, uh, what kind of advice would you give him to make sure he includes uh, into, into the next package? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to make sure I don't give out the wrong message. And the Japanese growth strategy is actually limited. And uh, we have an aging society and low birth rate. So therefore, we only like would have a demand for the medical and the elderly care, or the health care, and also agricultural business. And that can uh, produce uh, competitive products and energy, and also the environment. Probably those are the industries, you know, we should focus, you know, regardless, you know, that's a DPJ or LDP. I think, you know, they probably have the similar proposal or the idea. But the LDP has a very close tie with the corporate. So they might be kind of forced to accommodate to uh, the, those like a corporate, you know, they are close to. So therefore, you know, I'm really concerned about that. You know, they need to be really careful about, you know, who leads uh, the policy. Um, thank you very much. And uh, uh, in concluding the session, uh, I'd like to make one brief comment. Uh, that is the, on Monday, uh, we actually invited uh, Mr. Shiozaki, LDP uh, member, and today, uh, we have uh, uh, Mrs. Renho from DPJ. So uh, it was very, uh, it was a big, big pleasure for us to have a, both a, the current you know, government party and DPJ. And I think that's very good for us to have a very well-balanced view on Japan. Thank you very much.